I've really grown fond of the way that Digibyte goes about business. They keep their heads down, they build, they have a passionate community, a very passionate community. What is up, Hash Nation? Today we are talking about Digibyte, and more specifically, what new features Digibyte is introducing to their protocol, to their platform, throughout 2019 and beyond. These things are pretty game-changing, and I wanted to share them with you. Let's hash it out. And guys, really quickly, if this is your first time here on the channel and we're just now meeting, my name is Forrest. I'm a blockchain developer in industry, and I started this channel right here to help you build your knowledge, boost your cryptocurrency gains, and to help you join the movement towards our distributed, decentralized future. And if that sounds really good to you, you wanna join that movement, just smash the subscribe button and click the little bell notification button as well so we can hang out every single time I post a new video. Thank you guys in advance, let's dive into the video. Now like I said in the intro, the topic of today's video is Digibyte and more specifically, the new features that are coming to Digibyte this year. There are a few things that I wanted to mention in this video that are really, really game changing for the Digibyte protocol overall that I think you should know about. Now, if you guys have seen my review of Digibyte on my previous Token Talk Tuesday video, I'll link that above if you haven't seen it. You'll remember that Digibyte is a scalable, super fast UTXO based blockchain. And it has a really unique way of reaching consensus using five unique proof of work algorithms. However, that being said, proof of work is susceptible to ASIC mining, meaning specialized hardware that is focused solely on hashing as fast as possible on a specific type of algorithm. And what's happening is ASIC miners are dominating the mining space. And so projects employing proof of work with specific algorithms are trying to find ways to make ASIC mining less dominant in their protocol. And that brings me to the first game-changing feature that is coming to Digibyte in the near future, and that is Odacrypt Consensus. Now, in a nutshell, Odacrypt is a consensus mechanism that is tailor-made to prevent ASIC mining from dominating the process. And the way that it does this is by morphing consistently over time and changing the algorithm over time. And why this is important is that ASIC mining chips are specifically built to master one specific algorithm and one specific mining process. And so by morphing the consensus process and changing it even slightly over time and continuously doing that, it prevents mining companies, it prevents miners from specializing their hardware to dominate one process. And Odacrypt is actually named after a Star Trek character, Odo, who was someone who could mutate and change his form. He was a shapeshifter. And so that's where they derived the name from. This is a shape-shifting consensus mechanism that is designed to be a moving target for mining machines that are specialized. Now, how does all this work? Well, what happens in Odacrypt is that every 10 days at midnight, the algorithm is going to shift. And when that change occurs, all of the miners will take a configuration file that's provided by the protocol, and they will upload that to their FPGA, or their Field Programmable Gate Array. GPUs are also going to be able to have this functionality, but I think FPGAs are probably going to be the top pick for mining with this morphing consensus mechanism. Now what happens is as these mining algorithms change and miners then subsequently retailer their rig and reconfigure their software to run with that new algorithm, there's a two hour window where people on the previous algorithm are still gonna be able to mine with the people on the new one. But then after that two hours, anyone who is mining and hashing with the old algorithm is basically just wasting energy. They're wasting time hashing because they will not be able to participate effectively in the mining process. So what this does is it essentially means that every 10 days, if you do not upgrade your FPGA or your GPU setup, your mining setup, to then use the newest version of the mining algorithm for Odacrypt, you are essentially doing nothing in the mining process and you really can't participate in full. Now, this also means that if you have an ASIC mining rig that you super specialized for a specific proof of work algorithm, you're out of luck because you're gonna have to be able to constantly change and reprogram your mining rig. So in terms of ASIC mining being a huge risk for UTXO proof of work models, I think it's one of the main problems these days. 
and I think Digibyte using Otacrypt has a really good solution. I'm all for it, and I'm really excited to see how this moves into the overall consensus process, especially because we're in this multi-algo world right now. I don't have a specific release date for when Otacrypt is going to come to the Digibyte mainnet, but I know it's been tested, I know it's been working in testnet, and I know that there's a lot of work being put into making this stable for real-time use. Now, I'm definitely curious to see how Otacrypt is gonna fit in to the multi-algo situation if they're going to get rid of the previous five algorithms, move fully to Otacrypt, and then build from there. It's hard to say, but I'm pretty sure that's what's gonna happen. Now, before a lot of you miners get freaked out that this change is coming, you're gonna have to do a lot of work and it's gonna introduce a lot of overhead to reprogram your mining rig. That is actually not the case. Common mining rigs will probably only take a handful of seconds, 30 seconds at the max, to reprogram using the new configuration file for the mining algorithm changes. So every 10 days, it's gonna be a very short process to get your mining rig back up to speed. What this really means though, is that you need to have an FPGA or GPU enabled mining rig that is capable of having the flexibility to then introduce a new algorithm every 10 days. So it's phasing out ASICs as best as possible without making it extremely difficult for anyone else to mine with common GPUs and other programmable gate array technologies. Now, moving right along to the second big announcement, the second big feature that is coming to Digibyte, hopefully in 2019, I'm 99% sure it's gonna come in 2019, and that is Digi Assets. Now, most of you probably know that one of the main draws of using a platform like Ethereum is that you can create your own tokens with relative ease. You can build your own project with relative ease. Bitcoin and other platforms that use a UTXO model that don't have a native virtual machine, they don't necessarily have that capability built from scratch right off the bat. And what this meant is, is that if you wanted to build a smart contract based app, you'd have to use Ethereum or now one of these other platforms that have come out like Tron, EOS, Cardano, etc. Now, with that being said, Jared Tate, the founder and creator of Digibyte, saw this as an opportunity to introduce smart contracts and tokenized assets to the Digibyte ecosystem. And in several interviews, Jared Tate has talked about the concept of Digi Assets, the platform that will enable tokenized assets to be created, exchanged, and managed on the Digibyte blockchain. And in those interviews, he's talked about how the capability is definitely there. It's a matter of bringing in products, a suite of tools that will make it easier for developers and easier for users to make the most of this feature. Now, I'm really excited about this concept because you then take the best of both worlds in my opinion. I believe that a UTXO based model on a blockchain tends to have the most efficient and secure manner on which you can exchange tokenized assets, cryptocurrency overall on a blockchain network. However, I do acknowledge that it gets increasingly difficult to implement tokenized structures, smart contracts, virtual machines, etc., with a UTXO based platform. So the concept of being able to get off of a congested network like Ethereum and build a smart contract application with Solidity, a language that I already know, and to be able to build my own tokenized asset on the Digibyte blockchain and take advantage of the rapid pace at which Digibyte transactions are mined, that's a pretty exciting concept to me. One thing that I have to give Digibyte overall is that they do not release half-baked products. So I believe that even though Digi assets might be something that we would have loved to have seen a year ago, and maybe the functionality was there a year ago, I think the idea is to release this when there's a suite of tools around it to help developers make the most of it day one, and to help users be able to understand the benefits of Digi assets from day one. Furthermore, taking the opportunity to learn from other platforms like Ethereum that have thousands upon thousands of projects that have created new tokens that are now either lying dormant or congesting the network overall, trying to understand how to make the process more efficient, more scalable, and to not break what they already have in the Digibyte blockchain ecosystem today. So here's what I'm expecting when Digi Assets comes into the fray. I'm hoping for a really clearly documented idea of how the virtual machine is going to work. 
I'm expecting that there's gonna be Solidity smart contract support and probably Viper smart contract support and maybe DAML, DAML contract support as well, which is an open source contract language that's very interesting to me. And beyond that, I expect there to be a pretty wide array of different sample projects, tutorials, pieces of documentation to help people get started building out Digi assets and a clear set of use cases that the Digibyte team has put together about how Digi assets can be used. In one interview that I was reading recently where Jared Tate was speaking about Digi assets, he was saying one of the powerful concepts here is tokenizing real world pieces of art, pieces of jewelry, real estate, and even adding support for smart contract based or tokenized agreements of law. And all of these things are very powerful, but are also limited by the scalability and usability of the network and the platform overall. So I'm very excited to see Digi Assets coming into the fray, and I'm organizing a live stream with Josiah from Digibyte, and hopefully Jared Tate as well, to talk about Digi Assets and Odacrypt Consensus and see where all those things are at and what the plans are going forward. And if we're lucky, maybe Josiah can show us a little bit of what's to come for Digi Assets and maybe give us a little demo. So let me know in the comments below if you're interested in that live stream and we'll get that planned. And the third and final thing that I wanted to talk about in this video that is really, really important in the Digibyte ecosystem to me is DigiID. Now what DigiID is doing is it's taking the same concept as signing a transaction with your private key to send some Digibyte coins on the Digibyte blockchain and making that a method by which you can log in to different decentralized services. So by downloading the DigiID app, which is available on Android and coming soon to iOS, you can then create your own Digi ID and you can log in with single sign-on to various different platforms that offer this service. Now, as a developer, I looked at the libraries to implement Digi ID on my own websites, on my own projects, my own platforms, and all the libraries are super easy to read, super easy to use, and I can just imagine myself having my website and my users be able to log in using Digi ID, using a key signature without having to remember a password or a username. It's single sign on right off the bat using public key cryptography. And that also means that if you're using Digi ID to log into a service, it's checking against your signature, not that username and password. And so if for some reason there's another data breach on Facebook, for example, they aren't going to get your username and password because you don't have one you're going to log in using your private key signature. And that is something that I also think is very powerful because in a world today where your data is often stored in some place you don't know and often mismanaged, I would much rather have a Digi ID type platform where I can log in using a private key signature rather than having my username and password stored somewhere else. Now there are all sorts of other uses for Digi ID in many different ways. And one of the ways that I think Digi ID can really play into what Digi assets is going to bring is when you're trying to buy and sell real world assets and you need to digitally sign an agreement. Now, when you have Digi ID, you don't have to expose any personal information to the seller of a product or service you can simply sign a transaction, sign a smart contract agreement, and the deal is done. Now, I think DigiID is a very important platform going forward with all of these different things that are happening in the Digibyte ecosystem, making it more accessible for people to log into all the different Digibyte services, dApps, and other things that might crop up as these new updates come. Question of the day, guys. Let me know in the YouTube poll above what you think your favorite one of these three new features is. Is it Digi ID, Digi Assets, or Odacrypt Consensus? Let me know up here in the poll or in the comments below. After I did that deep dive on Digibyte a while back, I've really grown fond of the way that Digibyte goes about business. They keep their heads down, they build, they have a passionate community, a very passionate community like yourself probably watching this right now. And the whole entire purpose of the project is to make something that works and make something that works well. It's not about making money. It's not about making something that makes a company richer. It's just about the project. It's about the community 
and the whole ethos of what blockchain and cryptocurrency is all about. So my hat goes off to Digibyte, and I hope that these features come soon because I'm really excited to get my hands on them as a developer. Guys, as always, definitely check out one of my Token Talk Tuesday videos here or this video right here and stick around, watch some more of my content. I always appreciate your viewership and the time you spend on my content. Cheers.